Sit down, now, sit down. Get ready. Get close. I hope this isn't rubbing you the wrong. <laughs> Don't even. <laughs> that's, that, that's Sherry. She told me she had to go anyway. She said, I'm leaving early, so don't think that you're rubbing me the wrong way. <laughs> oh, okay, you gave me a calendar. Oh, <laughs> oh that rubbed me the wrong way. I'm playing. <laughs> That's fine. I'm cutting up. I'm cutting up with you. Get ready. Here we go. So I see it. <laughs> Y'all get ready. I'm almost through. I'm telling you, I ain't got 20 more slides. Remember, this is King saying, Y'all trying to see things from my point of view. If you want to, 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 and again, I'm not going to take time out to read the scriptures. You can read them if you want to. If, if you want to be an encourager, you've got to start trying to see things from others' point of view. We, we, we're good about our point of view. The other problem is that we're thinking about our point of view only. See, 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 whatever I do, I know my intention. I know what it is. Good or bad, pretty or ugly, I know my intention. Whatever I do. But no matter what you do, I honestly don't know your intention. So, here's what we do. We judge others by their actions, and we judge ourselves by intention. And by doing that, guess what happens? We stay in a circle of turmoil. Because we see our intentions, their actions, and now we're ready to duke it out and not realize that they're seeing you by your actions, not their intentions, and vice versa. And you just got to push the cool you going here. And nothing's, nothing's ever happened, happening correctly. So watch this. Barnabas, I believe in giving people a second chance. See, he, he had the grace of gift and mercy. John Mark, Paul got a bad taste in his mouth for John Mark. He got such a bad taste in his mouth for John Mark that he said he ain't going with us on the next missionary journey. He is not going with us. And Barnabas said, I, yeah, we are. He goes, no, we're not. He says, yes, we are. So Paul took Silas and Barnabas took John Mark. You see, he, John Mark was actually his nephew. So, or his cousin, excuse me, his cousin. So he would do everything he can. Colossians 14 tells you his cousin. Uh, he would do all he could to help John Mark. You see, 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 Paul believed that John Mark had whipped out when the going got tough. And he said, dude, I don't need wimps helping me. And so he was opposed. So opposed that it caused strife between him and Barnabas. The guy that had been there for him. The guy that had done something for him. But Barnabas saw something in Mark that Paul didn't see. Would y'all hold on to that? Barnabas, Mark, I mean, uh, Paul disliked Mark so bad that he did not want him with him again. Just, I don't want him in the ministry with me. I don't want to be around him. I don't want to see him. Barnabas comes along and says, it's not as bad as you think. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And so they get such a attention there they say, okay, then you want him, you take him. You see, 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 now, now let me tell you something about John Mark. John Mark, y'all might not know this. Of course, if you've been here for any length of time, I've preached it anyway. John Mark, there was something special about him. Later, watch this, see if you about see, 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 see another's perspective. It looks like a six to one and a nine to the other. See it? Later, John Mark. Work with the Apostle Peter. And the book of Mark, if you want to know the truth about the book of Mark, it was written by John Mark, the guy that Paul would have nothing to do with. It was written by John Mark, and it wasn't that John Mark was there per se, it's that he worked with Peter, and, and the Apostle Peter gave John Mark what happened in the life of Jesus, so the book of Mark could be called the Gospel of Peter. But it's the Gospel of Mark. And the reason it's the Gospel of Mark is because Peter, who, he was a wow man. He believed in John Mark. He took John Mark. He, he, he taught him all about Jesus. carried him all around with him. He ministered with him. And so he wrote the book of Mark. Wow, it's amazing how Paul didn't have anything to do with it. The greatest apostle ever lived said, I ain't going to have to do that with him. Nothing. I don't want to be around him. And guess what? Better be careful what you say. Sometimes those words 
go down a little harder than it did coming out. Because you see, later, when Paul is locked up, he said, I need you to bring me this, my cloak and my coat, and bring me the parchments that brings me comfort. And he says, look at this. I love this. He says, oh yeah. Why you at it? Go get Mark. Wait a minute. That's the one that caused him and Barnabas not to even be together. That's the one that caused so much stir. That's the one that caused so much stink to be a southern expression. And now, you want me to bring him? He says, yes, because he is helpful in my ministry. Wait a minute. How can this be? It's because of Barnabas. Barnabas, everybody could have written that boy off. He could have gone the other way. He could have been serving God. But instead, Barnabas looked for the best in people and looked at other people's perspective. You know what? We may not see eye to eye, but that should not keep us from continuing to move forward in the Lord. Amen? Somebody say amen. Don't get quiet. Amen. I'm almost thrilled. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to rub you the right way. So look, Barnabas felt so strongly about John Martin, he was willing to overlook his youthful mistake and give him a second chance. Aren't you glad we have a Savior that never gives up on us? Amen. Thank God he didn't give up on me. Wow. There's times I'm, I'm just surprised he just didn't go, Zzz. Yeah, God, God's good like that, amen. Regardless of the times you fail, Jesus is there willing to give you another chance, amen. And so let's, let's, let's get ready to move on. I'm here to show you something. I'm going to give you a, a, a little instruction here. We all need Barnabas in our life to help us when we're not up to par, amen. So here we go. Encouragement survival kit. How many ever heard of this? <laughs> An encouragement survival kit. Here's what you need. I want you to go home and make you a bag. And I want you to put these in your bag. I started to make some for everybody. But I didn't know how many to make. And plus, uh, I did this one, I was praying about it. I didn't get this to yesterday. So, so it was too late anyway. So y'all want to go home and make this. Write this down so you can remember. Everybody needs to get a little tool kit, a little box. A bag, put this in. Ready? Number one, I want you to put a toothpick. A toothpick. In your little bag. Why? To remind you to pick out the good qualities others. Also to remind you, get the pole out of your eye, the telephone pole out of your eye before you pick the toothpick out of your brother's eye. I just did it. That's a freebie. Toothpick, remind you to pick out the good qualities of others. Number two, a rubber band. A rubber band said it reminds you to be flexible. Things might always go the way you want, but it will always work out if you trust God. Number three, I want you to put a, a band-aid in. Amen? To remind you to heal hurt feelings, yours and someone else's. A verbal wound is as bad as a physical one. Everybody, when you walk around, you've got a bucket of gas and a bucket of water. Everybody. In certain situations, they need to be fired up and you need to throw gas on it. Others need to be calmed down and you throw water on it. The problem is, if you're not an encourager, when it needs water, you throw gas. When it needs gas, you throw water. An encourager knows when to throw. You know, I, I have not heard of an optometrist who fell into his lens grinder. He made a spectacle of himself. <laughs> all right. Oh, all right. <laughs> Next, <laughs> put a pencil to remind you to list your blessings every day. Put your eraser in it to remind you that everyone makes mistakes and that's okay. How many here doesn't make mistakes? <laughs> well, wouldn't that be? <laughs> uh, number six, chewing gum. To remind you to stick with it and that you can accomplish anything. Number seven, a mint. To remind you that you're worth a mint. Amen. You're worth a lot. Number eight, a candy kiss. To remind you that everyone needs a kiss or a hug every day. And then finally, a tea bag. To remind you to relax daily and reflect on all the positive things in your life. Encouragers are a very rare jewel. They make you smile. They encourage you to succeed. They lend an ear. They share a word of praise. They always are open, open their hearts to you. Wow. An encourager. You know a lot of times we call encouragers? Friends. Amen. 
No more than we're going to go. Y'all guys get ready. Play something. You ever look down on someone that you're helping them up again? I had that earlier, but listen. If you want to rub people the right way, friend sharpens a friend. Determined to be an encourager. <clears throat> be interested in others. Believe in their potential. And as hard as it is, try to see things from their perspective. That last one, or those last two, have been really cool. I was always interested in people, but once I started believing in their potential, I didn't give up on them. And once I started trying to see things from their perspective, they helped me to understand that although they might not change my mind about the situation, they'll change my mind about them in that situation because I understand where they're coming from. God wants all of us to be like Barnabas. Amen. Like Muhammad Ali. Everything shut down, but he wouldn't die because his heart just wouldn't quit. Wow. Everybody stand.